Pre-trip inspection. The pre-trip inspection consists of checking the presence and good operation of all parts and devices that ensure safe driving. The inspection is done in seven consecutive steps that transition one into the other, but for the purposes of this video, we'll follow a more logical order which is used during the actual test. And so, step one, front overview of the vehicle. The default position is in the front, and all inspection is conducted from the top down. It is necessary to ensure that no part is broken or missing and that everything is secured and functioning properly. The two lights on top of the trailer, clean, no cracks, working properly. The five lights on top of the tractor, clean, no cracks, working properly. The windshield, clean, no cracks. The wipers are working. The hood contains no cracks. The headlights, low and high beams, clean, no cracks, working properly. The turn signals from both sides, clean, no cracks, working and properly colored, amber or yellow. Mirrors from both sides are clean, no cracks and are securely mounted. The bumper is securely mounted with all the nuts. The license plate or tag is securely mounted and valid. Check that there is no sign of any leak under the engine. Fuel, engine oil, coolant, brake fluid, power steering box fluid, transmission liquid, etc. This is the first place you need to check for a possible leak under the vehicle. The radiator cover has no cracks and is properly mounted. This concludes step one. Step two. Engine Compartment Inspection The inspection starts from the driver's side. We open the trunk. As before, we observe from the top to bottom and from the outside in. The wheel, the tire and the rim. Check for cuts, scrapes or bulges on every tire's inner and outer side wall. The thread depth is 4 30 seconds of an inch for the steering wheel's tire. The air pressure is 80 to 100 psi, pounds per square inch. The rim has no cracks, dents, or welds. All lug nuts are tightened with no sign of rust around them. If you see rust around lug nuts, it may mean that they are loose. The wheel seal or central hub has no cracks and no leaks. The visible part of the brake drum has no cracks. The brakes. You need to examine three elements. The brake chamber should have no damage, the air lines should have no cuts, and the slack adjuster should have a free play of no more than one inch with the wheels choked and the parking brake released. The steering linkage. The pitman arm, the drag link, and the steering ring knuckle, which couldn't be seen from this angle. Make sure that the ball socket joints in the linkage are in good condition and have no damage. The suspension and frame. The front hanger of the spring has no damage and is securely mounted. The rear hanger of the spring is the same. No missing or broken leaves. The torque rod is not broken. The engine. The steering box is not broken, has no leaks, and is securely mounted. The power steering box has no leaks, is not broken, is securely mounted, and the fluid level is normal. Visible hoses and lines have no leaks. The steering column has no damage. The shock absorber has no damage, no leaks, and is secured properly. The air compressor is securely mounted, has no damage, and the belt is appropriately tight. The water pump is securely mounted, has no damage, no leaks, and the belt's tension is also appropriate. The engine oil level should be normal. The coolant system's joints should have no leaks. All visible pipes and electrical cords should have no damage. All rods and titers shouldn't be broken and should be well secured. We now move to the right side of the vehicle. In real life, you must inspect that side's suspension, wheel and brakes. 
but on the test you only inspect those items which were not seen from the driver's side. And now we continue with step two, once again the engine. The radiator cap is closed with no signs of a leak, the coolant level is good, you should never remove the radiator cap until the engine is cool. All hoses and wires are not loose and have no leaks. The radiator bottom hose has no damage and no leaks. The alternator is securely mounted, has no damage, and the belt is appropriately tight. This concludes step two. For the actual inspection, when you need to make sure that all lights and turn signals work, step three, inside cab inspection, is performed right after the engine compartment inspection. But in the test, it is postponed back to the end and is performed just before step seven, the four points brake check. And so we'll proceed directly to step four, rest of the tractor and front of the trailer. The tractor. Make sure the steps are clean and have no grease, otherwise you risk to slide and fall when entering the cab. The fuel tank is securely mounted with no damage, the cap gasket has no leaks, and the fittings are secure. There should be no evidence of a leak under the tank. This is the second place you must check for leaks under the vehicle. The muffler should be securely mounted with no sign of leaks. The mirrors on the door should be clean, have no cracks, and should be secured in their hangers. The door must open, and the door latch should be in good condition, and the grab handles should be secured. The tractor frame should be undamaged. The drive shaft should be undamaged. The catwalk should be secured. The rear wall of the trailer should have no visible damage. The tractor rear windows should have no cracks and should be clean. The trailer. The brake lines, blue service and red emergency, should be secured and not dragging on frame. The electrical cable should be secured and connected. The front wall of the trailer should have no damage. The tractor rear or driving wheels. Check for cuts, scrapes or bulges on every tire's side wall, inner and outer. The thread depth should be no less than two thirty seconds of an inch for a driving wheel's tire. There should be nothing between the tires, and the dual tires should not be touching each other. The wheel seal, or central hub, should have no cracks and no leaks. All lug nuts should be tightened with no sign of rust around them. If you see rust around the wheel nuts, it may mean that they are loose. The rim should have no cracks, dents, or welds. The visible part of the brake drum should have no cracks. The air pressure should be 80 to 100 pounds per square inch. The visible part of the inner wheel's rim should have no cracks, dents, or welds. The rear tractor suspension. The front hanger of the spring should be undamaged and securely mounted. There should be no broken or missing leaves in the spring. The rear hanger of the spring should be undamaged and securely mounted. The mud flap should be secured. At this point we'll temporarily stop performing step 4 because we're at a convenient place at the vehicle to perform step 5, coupling device inspection. The fifth wheel. Make sure that there is no space between the upper and lower fifth wheels and that the plates are greased as required. The fifth wheel should be securely mounted to the platform and the platform should be securely mounted to the frame with no less than five bolts on each side. We now move underneath the trailer. The kingpin should be undamaged and should be visible both below and above the horizontal bar. The locking jaws should be locked completely around the shank of the kingpin. And now we return and continue with step four, the rest of the tractor and front of the trailer. The differential. There should be no sign of leakage under the differential. This is the third place you need to make sure of no leaks under the vehicle. The brakes. The brake chamber should be undamaged and securely mounted. The airlines should have no cuts and the slack adjuster should have a free play of no more than one inch with the wheels choked and the parking brake released. Even though the rear lights of the tractor are not visible when towing a trailer, 
you need to make sure that they are clean, unbroken, and perform four functions. Brake lights, tail lights, rear lights, and turn signals. This concludes step four. Step six, the trailer. The trailer's bottom frame should be undamaged, the bottom hoses and lines should be undamaged, the trailer landing gears or the front trailer supports should be fully raised with the crank handle secured in its bracket. The side wall of the trailer should be undamaged, all lights on top should be working and clean, and all reflectors on the bottom should be undamaged and the correct orange color. The rear trailer wheels. The inspection is identical to the inspection of the front and rear wheels of the tractor, but we should review the process. Check for cuts, scrapes, or bulges on every tire's side wall, inner and outer. The thread depth should be no less than 2 30 seconds of an inch for the driving wheel's tire. The air pressure should be 80 to 100 pounds per square inch in both tires. The rim should have no cracks, dents, or welds. The wheel seal, or the central hub, should have no cracks or leaks. All the lug nuts should be tightened with no sign of rust around them. If you see rust around the wheel nuts, it may mean that they are loose. There should be nothing between the tires, and the dual tires should not be touching each other. The suspension and brakes. The front hanger of the spring should be secured and undamaged. There should be no missing or broken leaves. The torque rod or the torsion bar should be undamaged. The trailer air tank should be undamaged. The brake chambers should be undamaged and have no leaks. The brake hoses should be undamaged. The slack adjuster should have a free play of no more than one inch. The rear hanger of the spring should be securely mounted. The rear doors of the trailer. The lights and reflectors on the rear corners should be clean and working. The rear doors should be securely mounted. The three lights on top should be clean and working. The rear reflectors and lights should be clean and working. You need to make sure that the lights perform all four functions. Brake lights, rear lights, tail lights, and turn signals. The tag or license plate should be securely mounted and current. The tag light should be working. The ICC bumper should be securely mounted and the mud flap should be secured. The left side wall of the trailer. Reflectors and lights should be clean and working. The brake hoses should not hang but should be secured. The trailer frame should be undamaged. The crank handle should not be hanging it should be securely fixed in a designated bracket. The spare tire should be securely mounted. The thread depth should be more than 4 30 seconds of an inch in case the tire is needed to replace a steering wheel tire. This concludes step 6. Now we will regress back to step 5 because we're in a convenient place to finish the coupling device inspection. The locking lever should be in a locking position. The safety latch should be over the locking lever for coupling to be completed. This indicates that the coupling of the tractor and the trailer was successful. During uncoupling, the locking lever is pulled out and the safety latch is raised. This concludes step 5, and now we'll proceed to the step we postponed earlier, step 3, inside cab inspection. When starting this step, you always need to remember to put the ignition key into your pocket when not in use. And leaving the cab, always remember...